we're going to be talking about atoms. So, atoms. And the reason we're talking about atoms is also my favorite pun about atoms. Is why can't you trust atoms? It's because they make up everything. So, rather, everything is made up of atoms. And that's why they're so important and why we want to understand them, especially when we're studying radiology, when we're studying the physics of radiology. We want to know how do the x-rays interact with matter. Matter is obviously made up of atoms. And what we're going to talk about today is some basic models about atoms. We're not talking about fancy quantum mechanics, but we're talking about just the basic models to understand about atoms. And this was proposed by Niels Bohr back in 1913. Obviously built upon lots of other important physics and there's been a lot since then. But the basic model that we're going to talk about has existed since then. And what we're talking about is a nucleus. That nucleus consists of protons. So I'll draw some sample protons here. So protons, they reside in the nucleus. They're positively charged. And then at the same time in the nucleus, we have neutrons. And neutrons have no charge. And they're held together by this thing called the strong force that we don't have to know anything about for the purpose of x-ray physics. But we just know it's different than, for instance, electromagnetic force. So these things are held together tightly in the nucleus. And then outside of that nucleus, we have what's called an electron cloud. So the electrons are going to be moving about. And if we want to have a stable, here's my electron, if we want to have a stable atom, what we need is to have the same number of electrons that we have of protons. So if I have four protons, I'm going to want to have four electrons. And just for the purpose of this model, we draw them in these what we call shells. What it really means is there's different energy configurations for the electrons and they're moving about in an electron cloud and actually taking up most of the space of matter is taken up by this electron cloud. The actual nucleus is quite small. And let's talk about now the mass. So the mass of protons, the mass is basically the same between protons and neutrons, and that mass is much greater than the mass of an electron. So in terms of the units of kilograms, the things we're used to picking up, um, the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th kilograms. That's approximately the proton and the neutron. And the electron is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So you can see we're talking about a, several orders of magnitude, basically almost 2,000 times more massive for the protons and the neutrons. So when we talk about the mass, we're just going to be dominated by the protons and neutrons, and we can really ignore the electrons for the purpose of the mass. And then for the charge, the charge, we talked about it a little bit already. The charge for a proton is the same as the electron, but the electron has a minus sign in front of it. So their magnitude is the same, but the electron is negatively charged. So those electrons are basically going to cancel out the protons. And then the neutron has a charge of zero. We mentioned before, we want the same number of electrons as protons in order to have a stable atom. And if one of these electrons gets knocked off by, for instance, radiation, that's what's called ionization. 
because we took something that was stable and we made it what's called an ion. An ion is something that's charged. So if we take one electron away, then there's a net charge and we have something called an ion. That ion is going to be more interactive, could be more unstable. We'll be talking about that more as well when we talk about radiation damage and radiation dose. And then finally I want to talk about the electron configuration here. The electrons are configured in those shells that we talked about. So for instance, this inner shell can hold two electrons and the number of total electrons that we can have, we think about making a table here, the number of electrons and then a symbol here, which is basically a letter that we use, and then the total number of electrons. So number of electrons. Then this shell number is this one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. What we're gonna have here is symbols K, L, M, dot, dot, dot. And then the number of electrons in the inner shell we have two. And the equation that we have is the number of electrons is equal to this number squared times two. So for instance, in the inner shell, that's two. And then if we have two shells, if they are all full, it's going to be two squared, which is four times two, which is eight. And then if we have three shells, it's going to be three squared, which is nine times two, which is 18. And then so on. This is the way that the electrons fit into these shells that we talk about, the different energy configurations. And the energy configurations, the inner shells, inner shells, so shell K is the most stable and then L and then M. Those inner shells are more stable. So if an electron is knocked out of an inner shell, the electron from the neighboring shell is going to want to get into that more stable configuration and it can drop into that more stable configuration. And there's an energy difference between these two shells. And in order for the energy of the whole system to be preserved, an X-ray is actually going to be emitted if that's the case. Then what's the element that we've drawn here? The element that we've drawn here, let's count one, two, three, four. So the element that we've drawn here is actually beryllium and it has an atomic number, an atomic number of four. And that atomic number is just a number of protons. And then the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So we have one, two, three, four. I meant to draw one more. Where's my marker here? five. So one, two, three, four, five neutrons. So we have nine total nucleons, which is a proton or a neutron. Sorry, the atomic number is four and the atomic mass is nine. And then if sometimes you will see atomic masses that aren't just an integer, that are a fractional number here. And in that case, those are basically indicating that there's multiple different types of configurations of this that are possible in nature that could have different number of neutrons and that number indicates the relative weighted fraction of those existence. So at a high level we can just think about the number of protons plus the number of neutrons is equal to this atomic mass. So the takeaways for today, atoms make up everything. That's why they're super important. Protons, same as an electron in terms of charge. Protons, same as a neutron in terms of mass. Most of the space in atoms and in our body is actually empty. It's mostly that electron cloud. And we know that the inner shells are more stable and the outer shells are less stable. So the electrons would like to get to those inner shells if possible. 
Now that you know all of this basic information about atoms, it's going to be really important to go on over, check out our video It's coming up next about photoelectric and Compton interactions. It's going to make a lot more sense now that you know the basics about atoms.